must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Live Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. Good to have you guys here. Chat is open. We're going to have a fun one. You know I love movies. And so we're going to talk uh, movies because there's a movie coming out next week that you need to know about. Uh, if you if you saw Torture for Christ, you're going to love this. This movie is called Sabina. Uh, it's a Torture for Christ film. Uh, it's the Nazi years. And it is in theaters next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That is November 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, and it tells a little more backstory about uh, Richard and Sabina Wormbrand. So, I've got uh, the director, and we're going to talk about the movie, about the story. But first, I want to give you a little taste. So check out this trailer, and we'll be right back with the director of Sabina. I want the same things every girl wants. And then a little bit more. I want you to meet some more. Is every bit as ambitious as you. <laughs> Who's this? She is my niece, Sabina Oster. My mother is nagging me to get married. She's even picked out a girl. That sounds very nice for you. What do you think? I think my mother should ask me that question. Your mother's gonna kill me. can be looking for you today. I'm not hiding. Maybe you should. Uh, since he's been a bombard, we can get you to the border if we leave now. You know this is ridiculous. I'm collecting all the verses in the Bible that tell us not to be afraid. I think I might need to lean on all of them. If we stay... I'll follow the others into prison. It will be the end of our life together. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We believe this or we don't. I think we have to stay. We have a job to do. That is Sabina. It is in theaters next week in many cities. Uh, you can go to sabinamovie.com. I'll throw that in the chat and see if you are one of the lucky ones to see it in the theaters next week. If not, there'll be other ways to see it. But my gosh, if you can see it on the big screen, you know. Because, especially I will say this, it's a gorgeous film. Really pretty. Like, it's just so beautifully shot on location. And we're going to talk about some of that. John Gruders is the director. He is with me right now. John, great to have you on Live Today Live. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Nice to be here. So for those who don't know uh, really much about Voice of the Martyrs or uh, Richard and Sabina Wormbrand, give us a little backstory because you know their story very well after directing the, the Torture for Christ film and now directing Sabina's story. Give us a little bit of a picture of who they are in your view. You know, I never met them personally, so... Um but I feel like I've spent the last three years with them in a way. Uh, amazing couple, uh, Romanians, and um, both of them really gifted, talented people just in all the natural ways. You know, Sabina is a young woman who's attending Sorbonne University in Paris you know, in the 1930s. That was rare. Richard is just a brilliant, uh, high-rising star in any field, really, he would have gone in. Very talented guy, uh, had a photographic memory. He ultimately spoke 14 languages. So we're talking to kind of talented people, kind of cream of the crop in terms of the way um, we, we measure people in some ways. Um, but they really both end up, although they start off, uh, they were both raised in Jewish families, really non-practicing Jews. And when they meet in their early years, they're, you would probably call them hedonists, uh, really just after selfish pleasures in life, didn't want kids to slow them down. And, they got pretty much everything they wanted. They were successful. 
Um, their story is how, how they become Christians is kind of what this particular movie, Sabina, is about. And we kind of see the amazing series of events. But man, once they became followers of Christ, they get into that 100% sold out category. People that uh, are willing to just give everything for the sake of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that kind of character is rare to find. And it gets put to the test in this crucible of history which is the turning points of World War II in Eastern Europe. So the Nazis from Germany take Romania and the Holocaust hits Romania and, and Jews are murdered by the hundreds of thousands and they're Jewish. And they face all kinds of trouble from the Nazis and are, are arrested multiple times or threatened with execution or they come within half an hour of their own executions. That story then gives way to Romania switching sides in the middle of World War II and joining with the Allies. And now that seemed like maybe that would be a better turn, but what that meant was they got the Russian communists, they got the Stalinists, and a million uh, communists just poured over the border, just took over the country, took over the businesses, took over your house. You know, we scouted so many times uh, in the locations, Randy, and people would say, yeah, this is our house. We li we've lived here, our whole family's been living here. I'm looking at this little apartment and they said, oh yeah, when the communists were here, there were four of us that lived here, our family, our mom and dad and two kids. They moved 17 other people into our house for 25 years. Sure. So it's not like the communism is held at bay at an arm's length. They, they say, oh, you've got you know, 900 square feet, therefore you will house 12 people. And here they are. Um, so communism takes, takes over and it takes over the churches. And in, if you're complicit and if you play the game, then they'll pay you. And if you stand up for anything, they will arrest you. Hmm. So Richard is thrown into prison in 1948, taken right off the streets. And uh, communist prisons are brutal. Um, they, they don't just incarcerate you, in other, you know, to keep you uh, your danger. They, they try to re-educate you, and that's done through pain. Various forms of pain, physical torture, um, mental warfare. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. And Richard talks about this in, in the book, uh, Tortured for Christ, and in his subsequent books. Uh, a lot of people died, um, many people were broken, but there was a handful, well, more than a handful actually, of people whose faith is just crystallized mm -hmm. and solidified. Mm -hmm. And it gets to the point where Richard in the prison says the supernatural became the natural. So God was at work in, in these places. And uh, the story of how they continued to love uh, not only each other in there, but to love even their, the guards that were beating them on a daily basis. <laughs> Um, it's phenomenal, and it's the kind of test that most of us have never even had to be faced with. Hmm. Uh, but Richard and Sabina were faced with these tests, and they, they grew through them. They grew in their faith, and they grew in their character, and uh, they had experiences with God that, that are exciting to find out about. So that's the kind of people they were, and, and when they ultimately get out of there and come to America, they founded this ministry, originally called um, Jesus to the Communist World, and later became the name uh, that we have today, The Voice of the Martyrs. Yeah. And The Voice of the Martyrs is the organization who sponsored these movies, and um, they're in 63 countries around the world today, keeping us abreast of how suffering is contemporary in the world, and Christians do not deserve to be forgotten as they go through the fire. Yeah, and I, and I do want to come back to that because it is still going on today in many countries. but. I, the thing that struck me about the film, and I'm not, I promise no spoilers, okay, guys? No spoilers. You have to go see the movie for yourself. Um, but you, you, you mentioned that, that they were there in Romania, and this is something I've been to Romania, but I, I don't think I realized that they, they did the flip. The whole country went from being on the Nazi side to being on the ally side, which meant the Stalinists, uh, unfortunately for them. Um, there were, they, were, they had to learn how to love their enemies and their enemies' enemies and rise above the the political chaos in a way that I, I think is actually a pretty good lesson for us today because we think, oh, it's never been worse than it's, you know, ever, it's, it's worse than it's ever been here in the United States, the political division, that's nothing, nothing compared to what these two people lived through and had to learn how to, how to be Christians in the worst circumstances, as you went on location in Romania and you, you, you could see, you saw some of the places where they walked and you saw some of the, you know, the residue of the old 
you saw the prisons, <laughs> you know. Um, what did it do? What did it do for you? What, what were your thoughts as you're, as you're seeing all that, knowing their story? Man, so many experiences have left deep imprints on my soul from these times. You know, the prisons is a good place to start. You know, we filmed in the previous movie, Tortured for Christ, uh, we filmed in uh, Jilava Prison. And Jilava was one of the places Richard was, was held. Mm. And f in a fascinating turn, I mean, Jilava is still an active prison. Now, it's, it's two different parts. And so if you, if you go to the left, that's where they have an active prison. We went through the gates, but then we went down to the right, where this prison that was built at the turn of the century, 1900, uh, sprawls for acres, and it's underground, and it's damp, and uh, horrific things took place in this prison, and we've read about them. And so we wandered down into this place to scout it. And as a director, I have, uh, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say, I'm looking at it thinking, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> sure. This is perfect. <laughs> right. Cinematically, this is great. And we can, now the guys who are walking around with me are remembering the stories mm -hmm. of their grandfathers, or in some cases, their fathers. And these are big, tough dudes, and uh, they're, they're very hesitant. And it, it, it really reminded me that this is not a place to be flippant. You know, this is like scouting at Auschwitz or something. Um, if you're at all cognizant, cognizant of what went on here, you hold this place with, a, with almost a deep um, sense of respect and awe. And uh, I had read about this prison and wandered through it one morning, early one morning I was there, to try to find this room that Richard had written about in Tortured for Christ. And he said there was one room in the center of the prison where there was no exterior windows. They would cram 100 or more of us in there. The water would be a foot or two deep, teeming with malaria. And the only air vent was a small two by three foot window somewhere. And then that's the only place air, and it was dark and filled with disease. And, and he tells the stories of men who even laid down in the, in, the, in the water to die so that their brothers could lay on top of them and not die. I mean, just stunningly stories like this, just horrific. And I've read these. So I'm wandering through this prison early one morning by myself, and I found the room, you know. I found the room, and I was not in the right headspace. I was not being mature, and I clapped my hands. Bang, bang, <laughs> Had this crazy reverberate echo into it. I don't even know why I'm telling this story, because it's embarrassing. But then, out of nowhere, I just started singing. And uh, the song that came to mind was Led Zeppelin. And I don't know why I sang that, but I sang it. <laughs> hey, hey, mama, the way you move, oh, make you sweat, oh, make you groove. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then I think the Holy Spirit said, John, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> what are you doing? You're playing around with the acoustics. And it, it did kind of convict me. And I, I was, thought I was all alone. And still, I started humming Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. And I was sort of much more prayerful. And I was trying to redeem the space, redeem what I had just done. <laughs> so I'm singing hallelujah, Leonard Cohen's hallelujah. And I kind of, I felt much more holy and I felt much more like God had, had sort of taught me a lesson. And I turned around and four of the crew were standing right behind me. I hadn't even heard them come up. Three guys and a gal and, and she's got tears running down her face. And it was one of those moments where all of a sudden, I didn't do a lot of preaching on the set. We're movie makers. And I, but at that moment, I said, I don't know what you just heard, but that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to redeem this place. Mm -hmm. That there is redemption through Christ for anything, even this place. And I walked away. That was small, small. And then later in the day, Judy, my wife, who's the producer, she was talking to the production manager. And he said to her, Judy, can I talk to you? He said, do you know that this morning, when John sang, that that echoed through the entire prison. Oh. And that all the crew who were bringing in the cables and the lights and all the things, they all heard that. I had no idea. And they said, it changed everything. It changed their entire outlook of, of them working in this horrible space. Mm -hmm. So obviously I look back and I think, man, God used that time uh, to sort of teach us a lesson that the whole movie is about what Satan meant for evil, God can use for good. And that is the story of Richard and Sabina Warmbrand. And on this film, we were filming in uh, studios called Bufta Studios, which was built by the communists to mimic the biggest television studios in Russia. Huh. And they built this massive studio, you know, six foot thick walls and huge place. And they, 
they just turned out propaganda after propaganda all through the 50s, and that's what this studio was built for. And now it sits mostly empty, and we get to haul our crew in there and now use it to share the gospel. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the Roman roads. That's, that's uh, our version of the Roman roads. Yeah. So these, these kind of things are, are powerful to me when we can sort of now redeem something that, that had one time been so cruel. Yeah, we're talking to John Gruders. He is the director of the movie Sabina. And uh, if you go to sabinamovie.com, you can find out about the movie, see how you can see it next week in theaters, which I highly recommend uh, because that's just the best way to see it. And it shows support for Christian films, which is always critical, so we can we can make more of these. But uh, this one, not a lot of prisons in this one, uh, you know. No, so, no, it's a different <laughs> so story. For anybody who's like, oh, no, I don't know if I could. Yeah, right. No. This one is a very different story. Uh, in, in the sense of it's not about the torture. No. Uh, that comes later. So this is sort of the prequel to, to a lot of what John's been describing. But, John, why, this is, okay, I think the thing about the whole premise here that I, I, it struck me, and I like it, is you're focusing on a woman. You're for focusing on Sabina here. Why did you focus on her? Um. Well, for one thing, I think she is one of the most incredible Christian women of the 20th century. I mean, I just think there is nothing about her that isn't uh, compelling and amazing. And she, she was such a partner to Richard. Richard's a strong personality. He's tall. He's, he's a leader, natural leader. Um, but Richard and Sabina are a powerful couple. And it, in key moments in their life, it was her who, who, who takes that bold step, that, that, that bold step. In, in the previous movie, In Torture for Christ, Richard attends the Congress of the Cults, which was assembled by the communists in order to kind of bring all the religious leaders together and coerce them all to, to work together. And they were all falling for it. And Richard and Sabina are sitting in that room, and, and he says, you know, should I speak? Should I say something? Should, I, should somebody speak the truth in this pack of lies? And, you know, he says to her, you know, if I speak, you'll have no husband. And Sabina famously says to him, I don't need a coward for a husband. Mm. And, you know, his concern was, you'll have no husband, you know, if mm. I speak. And so she says, go ahead, you know, I think God is bigger than this. And so he speaks, and of course he's arrested, and yet that isn't the end of the story. God uses the whole thing. Well, in this movie, we get to see how she comes to be that person. And we see sort of the baby steps along the way of how, you know, she goes from being a complete atheist to being that, that person. So I think she's a powerful Story. And the other, I also don't remember seeing many movies about married women, especially married Christian women. A lot of the great women were single and were missionaries. But I think it's a unique story to see how powerful a marriage is and, and how they complemented one another. Um, and I think she's likable, just to put the last thing on the table. Yeah. When we, we cast Richard and Sabina, it's such a big deal. If, you know, if you land on a good cast your movie has such a great chance for success. And when we met Emil Mondanak and Ruluca Botez and, and, and cast those two to play Richard and Sabina in the, in the Tortured for Christ movie, um, when I went back to Romania, the very first meeting, really the only important meeting on my first trip was to get those two together and say, you guys wanna do this again? Would you be interested in a prequel? And their enthusiasm and desire to work together with me again and together, that was really the first thing I needed to, to deal, deal with because um, they're two of the most talented actors I've ever met, and they're, they're totally all in, total professionals. And I just knew that um, Raluca would be just a delight, you know? She's just a delightful person, and, and that the audience could see her characterizations of Sabina. And, uh, you know, you have to like your main characters. You have to yeah. care about them. Yeah. Otherwise, why would you sit there and watch their story? Well, and it, I believe she could do that. They, and, they, and they have to be believable. And, and I, I, so I wanna, I'm going to nerd out here in a minute, and we'll talk production just because I love it. Uh, and I think some people will find out some interesting things about behind the movie. But before I go there, uh, you've screened this. Um, you've seen reactions. I know you obviously, I would assume, have some, uh, some, what, some things you want people to take away, some reactions you want the audience to have. I mean, that, that's what art does. It evokes an emotional response in people. Uh, what are you seeing and what do you hope to see more of as the audience watches Sabina? 
Well, all right, this might sound, but the first place we screened it was this summer at the Christian Worldview Film Festival in Atlanta. It's a great festival. I love the, the, the leadership there. I love everything about it. So we screened the movie. I did a Q&A uh, the next morning. You know, and one of the questions was a, a man said, it was a large group of people said, how is it that every frame in the movie looked like a painting? Yeah. <laughs> and you had said something about this is a good looking movie. And I, I, that really thrilled me because even though the story and everything is critical, the look of a film does create an impression. And I'm really happy with the looks that the art department and the cinema department and the lighting department, everything we put together. So I'm happy to see, even what you said, that there's a look to this film that's uh, engaging. Uh, I love that. Um, you know, and I was just talking about, I want you to care about your main characters and I want you to meet them. And, and so we, we introduced Sabina right off the bat and you kind of get to know her. And there's a scene you know, early in the movie. And uh, I like to sort of, if I'm at a screening, sort of sit in the front and, and watch the faces, especially at particular points where I'm curious, have, have we got them? Are people, you know, on their watches or on their phones? There's, right. there's that option. Yeah. Or there's this engaged, completely, you know, just completely absorbed in this story look. And, and, and that's the most fun as I go to movies, man, I want to be completely absorbed in the film. And and just thinking about what's going to happen next. And when there are points in the film where I wanted people to really smile because, you know, tortured, like you said, is a, it's a powerful film and it's, it's, it's not a torture film. It's a, it's a story of faith, but there are harder scenes to watch. There's not a lot of comedy and there's not a lot of comedy in this one either, but there are points that are joyful. Yeah. And there, are, I love when I look back at those points and I, I especially like to look at the women in the audience because I'm, I'm anxious to see how they respond. And there's a couple of points where I've yet to not see just this sort of enchanted smile on their face. Something beautiful is happening and I've been caught up in it and I'm rooting for them. So when I see those, those smiles, I get, I get very uh, happy. But then when the movie comes to a completion, we screened it in, in Colorado this summer for a, a, a leadership group, an inv by invitation only three-day seminar for uh, men in leadership in, in Windsor, Colorado, and we screened it there. And these were pretty, um, I would just say, you know, leaders. I guess these were pretty, pretty people who have had um, some success and some leadership. And when the movie finished, I was sitting on the stage, we were gonna do a Q&A, and it was just dead silent in the room for minutes, three minutes. And then a prayer meeting just broke out, like unguided. People just started offering prayers. And I'm sitting in the front of this theater seeing the reaction that particular night. And as much as, I hate to admit this, but I was thinking to myself, this is the highlight of my career right now. You know, as a filmmaker and as a musician, some of this always worked to engage audiences. This moment right now where the film has just taken over, God is the superhero and people are praying and confessing and, search and seeking how to be more forgiving as Christians. This is, the, this is why we learned our craft and this is what we work for. That was a really great, a really great moment. Yeah, that's, that's great. I think you're gonna have quite a few more of those uh, actually starting next week. By the way, I'll keep plugging the times because people need to know because the time is, is short. It's coming up very quickly if you want to see it in theaters. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, and so some people obviously won't get the, uh, the movie in their cities, in the theaters, or maybe they can't go. Uh, or, you know, you still have a little COVID hanging around, the, the concerns of theaters. But um, do, you, do you know yet what will happen Later, someone who can't go to the movie theaters next week, do they have a way to see it? You know, I'm not on the, the marketing or distribution side of this, so I may not have all the details right. Yeah. But yeah, the theatrical is a three-day Fathom event, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eight, nine, and 10. And if you go to that website and you, you, know, you click the buy tickets, it'll ask you for your zip code. And if you put your zip code in, it'll show you the theaters that are closest to you. And we're in 850 theaters, so there's a good chance mm -hmm. that you're within 15 or 20 miles of a theater, a good chance. Um, beyond that, yeah, all the normal plans will be coming out down the line where there will be some uh, video on demand and then there'll be some broadcast and then there'll be the DVDs. And even in a year, we're gonna have the group study, which I'm working on right now coming out. So, you know, if it's not available, I would, I'm sure that, you know, v and VOM is so good. They, they really see this as ministry. Their goal is to yeah. get this in front of as many people in as many languages as possible. Yeah. So they're, of course, will be other opportunities. Yeah, so you, you could always check the website, sabinamovie.com, uh, the immediate place to, to check and uh, follow up on that, Judy. Thank you for asking. Um, all right, a couple more minutes. 
We talked about the the look of the film, which again is it's stunning and it's it's really convincing. It, it gave me kind of a almost a sound of music feel. Uh, mm-hmm. That's kind of what I thought of. Of course, I'm a total sound of music nerd. I went to Salzburg, <laughs> Austria, and went on the Sound of Music tour. I mean, I'm that level. Uh, of course, this is not a musical, but the, the the look is is gorgeous. And you mentioned the actors. That was the other thing that I, I noticed immediately. I, I mean, I don't know who these people are. The, these people are Eastern European actors, but they were they were convincing. I believed them, which I know enough to know that I, I blame the director. If if the acting's bad, half the time it's the director's fault. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the blame for having really good actors, which is credit, <laughs> of course. But how Listen, do you... I say all the time directing is 90% casting, Randy. So is I agree with you. Well, so, so where did you find them? How did you find these people? It turns out uh, a couple of things were working on our favor. Bucharest is a fantastic theater city. A theater is alive and well in Bucharest. And it's big theaters, small theaters, one-man shows. Um, there's a lot of theater in, in Bucharest. And uh, because of that, there's a fairly good-sized troupe of professional actors who are serious about their craft. Hmm. Um, and so we did extensive casting. And, and our partners in, in Romania that we've become really great friends with, their main business is they do overdubs for American movies. So in American uh, movies, like cartoons especially, you know, Lego Batman or Sing comes in, all those voices have to be replaced for the Romanian version with Romanian actors. So their, their list was broad. They, they, they had a good uh, relationship with a lot of that talent. Wow. But even having said that, we spent weeks and, and, and did dozens and dozens and dozens of, of auditions. And we ended up with a cast that includes a lot of the major stars that ha- were willing to work on this film in smaller roles. And that's the hard thing. Usually a major star wants to be the main star. Right. But even our smaller roles in this thing are are filled with seasoned um, actors. So in my opinion, um, if I do get any credit for the quality of the acting, I will take it because I think, not because I deserve it, that's not what I mean. It's because I agree with you. Um, I love the cast and they are uh, professionals. You know, they, and you might have heard people say, well, you can't bring a theater actor onto the film because they will project and they will be big and right. they will send, and I'm like, are you kidding? You don't think they can tell the difference between if they're on a stage and if there's a camera right here and there. They, they, know, they know a lot of things about character. Plus, they're, they're particularly good head to toe. And uh, I always talk about acting head to toe. It's, uh, so, yeah, I care a lot about, about the cast, and, and I, th- I think they're sublime. Yeah, but it does take the director to know how it's looking through the lens. So if, if, if they are overacting, you can tone them down to a second take. I, I, know, I know enough to know that you did a great job with the actors. I'm going to take a shot here. Um, the the Butcher. Is he one of the well-known established actors you're talking about? <laughs> so Gabby Costine, uh, yeah, he plays the role of Gorilla, and, and it's, a, it's a role of a young man who's lost and passionate and angry, and all of his natural passions just get swept up as the legionnaires and the Iron Guard come to his small town. And you can imagine this happen. You can... I mean, you can project, this is how Al-Qaeda recruits people. You know, you're young and bored and you have energy and someone comes along with a cause. You don't even necessarily care what the cause is, man. You're just, give me something to do. And this is this, is this character, Burl, and he becomes a terrible executioner in the camps and he does horrific things. That actor, however, Gabby Costine, who um, just won Best Supporting Actor, by the way, at the Toronto International Film Festival really? for his role as Barilla, um, is mainly a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> really? And he's a fun, he's actually a really fun guy. And so when we're hanging out, he's always got me laughing. And I'm like, I'm not sure we can bring him to seem evil because he's such a nice guy. But he was a good enough actor to to get crazy, to just take, you know, oh, yeah. I'm home because we're all out of juice to kill. Right. And he's just nuts. But he also had something cuddly and redeemable about him that in the end, you know, he gives you the chance to take that big journey. So um, anyway, that's the actor you're talking about, yeah. the butcher. Uh, yeah, he Abby was great. Christine. Yeah, he was great. A lot of fun. All right, John, I appreciate your time. This has been fun just to chat about the movie. I, I really hope people go see it and support it in theaters as much as possible again, because that that is the, the business behind the industry. And we as Christians, I think it's important to, to say, hey, we're behind the business side of it. We want to see more films like this because we all know we're on board. And you see this film, you're going to, you're going to be on board uh, from an emotional 
uh, spiritual standpoint, it's it's man, it's <laughs> it'll it'll make you think in, in a very healthy way. Is there anything I missed? Anything that you want to mention that I haven't g- asked you about? No, I appreciate I appreciate you being willing to talk about this. I could say the same thing about Christian radio and Christian media that you're doing. You know, it is hard to find uh, healthy food at these uh, media restaurants that, that we consume at. And <laughs> yeah. I think Savina is a really healthy restaurant, and I think you'll feel good uh, and rich and enriched after you, you hear her story because it's a true story of, you know, we just had All Saints Day yesterday. And, you know, um, I think, you know, the Bible talks about we're, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And there are people who have gone before us and who have lived lives of such exemplary character, and they have paved the way for us. And... Um, it does us well to, to focus on them a little bit. So I just appreciate your time, Randy, and Absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty blessing on your show. Oh, thank you. Thank you, John Gruder's director of Sabina in theaters next week. Uh, go to the website, sabinamovie.com, and check out how you can see the movie, hopefully in your town. If not, there'll be ways to see Always it soon. possible. Appreciate you guys hanging out here on Live Today Live. We'll see you next time. He has given us the will to choose to come. Nobody can prevent you from doing the will of God.